So Gilbert, obviously, uh, we had the uh, we had Tony Khan sit with us. He's a compa. We had him sit down yeah. with us at uh, at uh, at the Super Bowl and everything. And I'd love to get him on again because, man, there. So I mean, obviously, I'm a huge WWE guy. I'm a wrestling guy. But one thing that keeps on drawing me to AEW is uh, MJF. MJF is this guy who um, who he's only 24, 26 years old. He's uh, he's a good he's a really good wrestler. He's good on the ring. But you know what sells me? If you can get jump on that mic, and you can like and you can go off, then I'm all about it. That's why at one point I like CM Punk. But then I noticed the, the kind of dude that CM Punk was, and he was just kind of a he's kind of a jackass. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm like I can't stand you. But Maxwell Jacob Friedman is legendary, dude. Like I saw the promos he cut against CM Punk. Man, he ran circles around CM Punk when they were mm. when they were going against each other, and then I start listening to this thing where he's calling it the uh, like so he's about to be a free agent in 2024, and he goes out there and he starts cutting promos about man. Uh, he's like, maybe I want my boss to be a former wrestler. Maybe I want to face John Cena. He goes out there, dude, and he starts name dropping like he he has he gives no f's. He goes out there and he starts name dropping. He's like, maybe I want Triple H to be my boss. This and that and that. And then so like he had uh so obviously uh over the weekend, and this this was last week, and this is why I'm telling you, watch the passion in his face. MJF cut a promo with William Regal. William Regal, everybody knows WWE legend. William used to be talent uh relations for WWE. So he would go out and search talent the way Mark Henry. Remember when we had Mark Henry on and he yeah. explained the way he would go find no, talent. Play. Exactly, another compa. So William Regal found guys like John Moxley, who oh well, he was uh Dean Ambrose, now John Moxley. He found uh Cesaro, remember the king of the swing, Cesaro, and he found uh Daniel Bryan, so who's now uh Brian Danielson in uh in W in the AEW. So he went he found all these guys. Well, what so MJF was 19 years old. He goes to a tryout for WWE and William Ringo tells him, dude, I'm sorry, you're too young. Like you need to go get better. So then he's like, send me a promo and send me a, a match every single month and I'll review it and I'll tell you about it. So every month he would send it to him. So he sends him a letter back saying, I'm sorry, kid, but you're just not good enough to, to be in WWE. I'm sorry. Good luck in all your future endeavors. So this is MJF. Uh, after he read the letter, this is him with William Regal uh, in the ring because uh, William Regal is now a part of AEW finding out talent for them. But watch MJF's face uh, during this. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a quick little snidbit. That's the email you sent to a 19-year-old kid, a child with a dream, and you squandered it. Look at me. Look at me, no, no, look at me. This is real life, God damn it. When I read that email, when I read that email, I, when I read that email, I wanted to quit professional wrestling. I wanted to quit my life. Look me in the eyes when I say this. That email made me want to kill myself. Wow. Wow, the passion. Like, <laughs> man, I'll tell you, I watched that promo and I was like, oh, crap. Gilbert, before I get more into him, you got to watch him in L.A. When he when uh, AEW was out here, unfortunately, AEW didn't grab me anything. They didn't want me there. It's all right. We're good. No no hard feelings. I still love them. Uh, can you talk about what it was like? to? Because he cut a promo uh, there. That's where he cut that promo saying I may, uh, he was asking Tony Khan for a raise. He's like, boss. Uh, he's like, because there's rumors that supposedly that the former WWE wrestlers make more than the guys that just came into AEW, the original AEW people. So he's like, boss, would you want me to be a former WWE wrestler? And so everybody just erupts. But Gilbert, what was it like to be there for that? And you being more of a casual WWE or wrestling fan. Yeah, uh, uh, that's why I'm glad you you showed me the promo that he cut before we started recording because yeah, that pipe bomb. I feel like that's where he got noticed from the casual wrestling fans like myself. Like if you're watching AEW, you know how great this guy's on the mic. He's special, great wrestler, all that, great persona. Uh, but you know, I think I was just getting there. I was trying to get to my seat at the forum, and you know, I'm trying to think about where, where can I find a beer. I need a beer. I need I need to chill out here with a beer, and then he starts. 
going into the middle of the promo, I'm like, whoa, I could I could sense the passion. This guy is screaming, but he's not just like rambling. He's like really wants to say something. And I want and I listen. He got my attention that way. Uh, so I could tell this guy somebody really gets into character and he makes me believe like that's who he is. Like when I was watching that promo right now that you put on YouTube, like I'm pretty convinced that story is real. You could tell me if it's not with the Willem Regal stuff, because at one point I thought he was going to cry. I don't know if he was trying to fake it or whatever, but it made me believe like, wow, he went through that. He experienced that. Thank you for sharing that story, that part of your life. So I felt like uh, that's a big part of, of promo, uh, being a promo reader. Uh, and like I always say this about boxers, like if you don't know how to sell, you don't know how to you know be personal, you don't know how to have uh, some kind of personality, people won't care about you. People care about MJF, and I know there's a whole shift now going back to the WWE and Triple H. But if you have that star, that magnet, MJF, people are going to keep watching, tuning in. And that's where Tony Khan could take advantage. Okay, the people are here for MJF. Now let's get a better show, a better production, because 2024 is coming. we got to keep this guy around. But overall, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm forgetting the WWE side, but I think I, I'm not afraid to say he's the best uh, promo guy in, in wrestling. He's best on the mic. I'm not saying it's a rock level, but for right now, he's really good on the mic. He he might be up there in the if you give him a couple more years, he might be up there with those guys just because of the way he kind of speaks. He's not there with Paul Heyman either yet, but he is as a wrestler. I feel well, like he is. Say, I, think, I think I think I think he's the best one in AEW on the mic. Okay, and now it's the sense of right now Roman Reigns is the best really? on the mic. In my oh. Roman Reigns or the Miz, he the so, Miz is good. so they were calling him a bootleg Miz for a little bit. The Miz, the Miz will give you a great promo too. So I think it's between Roman Reigns and and the Miz and MJF for your top three, in my okay. opinion. I can't think right now, but I, I might go, I might go Roman just because of his character right now. He's number one. But I think MJF is is a close mm. second. But That's, MJF is just, <clears throat> yeah, no, I I, I think MJF right. needs a little bit more. I think if you're just going off mic skills, I think it's MJF who's better. But you're right on the character part. You got to have a good character, and you're right, yeah. the head of the table. Everything that Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns did to evolve that character is really good. So you're probably right there. But before we move on to the next time, Fernando. I don't know why you asked me because you're the expert. You're the scout of guys on the microphone. Can you play that snippet one more time and then give me like 30 seconds of your breakdown after? That's that's all I want to hear because I want to hear your scouting report on MJF. I don't know what you're asking me, man. I'm the casual here. Well, because you're the one that like I, you were there. I mean, I was I I wasn't there when when he uh, when he cut that whole promo. No, yeah, but it was just man, it was just it was crazy. Let me um let me pull it up. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You hear that? <laughs> but it was and you know what the before I uh before I get to uh, before I get to the to the clip, William Regal actually combats him and says you did exactly what I wanted you to do. I did that to inspire you to see if maybe you would take off and do what you were doing. And he's like, "Don't try and play mind games with me, Regal." He's like, uh he's like, "I know why you did that. You thought I had no talent." He's like, "Then why are you here?" And so, like they, the, so it was. William Regal held his own. It's just that he let MJF go off. Well, well that's the awesome part. Own. Like it feels real, right? Like that's something. Yeah. Like, if I was in yeah. William Regal's situation, I would think the same way. Like you're not ready, kid, and now you got to thank me. That's awesome. I'll put it to you like this: passionate, passion, passion. MJF and the Miz are the two of the top. In, like when the Miz talks about being disrespected by the WWE, not getting title opportunities, being left to fight against Logan Pauls and all these other guys who aren't at his level, I and having to fight Bad Bunny and all these other guys, I feel that passion and I feel yeah. the anger in him. So with when it comes to passion, MJF is at the top of AEW. And the Miz is at the top of uh, WWE. The only reason why I would give the Miz an edge is because he's been doing it for longer. But I think in at one point, and I'm telling you, if in 2024 the WWE completes the free agency signing of the life of a lifetime, and they bring MJF in, it's over. He's gonna him with Triple H with all the superstars that WWE has. He's gonna be able to do a lot more. And you know why they're gonna need him. Roman Reigns is starting to dwindle down a little bit. We, we're starting to notice it. Roman's not showing up every single week. He's not doing all that. If Roman can 
if by 2024 they get MJF and Roman can really go into the sunset, do what he wants to do, do movies, do all this other stuff, and MJF can come in and be the, the focal point of WWE, along with the Seth Rollins. Oh, shoot, Seth Rollins. Crap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. No, Seth Rollins is incredible on the mic, too. Becky yes. Lynch is another one. Okay. So, see, that's the thing. Then we get into that. And it's like yeah, Seth well, Rollins when, when in there. Too. We need to have a show where you give us your top ten. Uh, but real quick, Frank, because I want you to play the clip yeah, one more yeah. time because it was that good. And give me give me a report. But I'll say this because it is twenty twenty four. The more MJF builds that character in AEW, the more people are waiting on AEW, um, WWE. The better that's going to be when they get him. Ooh, I can't wait. So here we go. Look at William Regal's smug face. I love it. I love when <laughs> William Regal does that. All right. That's the email you sent to a 19-year-old kid, a child with a dream, and you squandered it. Look at me. Look at me. No, no, look at me. This is real life, goddammit. When I read that email, when I read that email, I, when I read that email, I wanted to quit professional wrestling. I wanted to quit my life. Look me in the eyes when I say this. That email made me want to kill myself. What got me was the stuttering. When you start stuttering, that's the passion. That's truth. That ain't that you can't fake that. When guys can go out there, they can BS all they want. But when you start stuttering, <laughs> the passion in your eyes, the redness in your eyes, you can tell it hurt him. And he was at that point where he thought, why am I doing this anymore? And not just about wrestling. Maybe it is, maybe he did almost take his life, but just for him to share that story, for him to share that passion. That just shows you how much he cares and how much he loves uh, working in the WWE. But, man, his face, just the electricity, the way he, like, changes. Because at the beginning, he's not and not just in the clip, but at the beginning of the whole presser, he's calm, he's relaxed. Then he starts moving. He gets more aggressive, more passionate. His chest even kind of, like, boom, like, jumps up a little bit. And when he's talking about that letter, when he talks through that letter and he talks all about that, you can just tell his thing flips and he goes back to what happened and what uh, and what that moment was like for him. He wasn't he wasn't 26 year old MJF uh, who's there in the wrestling ring. He was 19 year old MJF who read the letter and just and couldn't believe what uh, what William Regal had wrote him. So incredible, just incredibly passionate. And I, I really think he is one of the best right now in the business. And you haven't even watched him in the ring. He's even better in the ring. But his promo rating is incredible. The storytelling man for 14 minutes. I think it's my friend. The 14 minutes to cut that promo. You can't even call it a promo because promos are like what two minutes. No. One minute. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a storyteller yeah. right there, and that's a big part. Like you mentioned, character, uh, storyteller, microphone skills, if, all that. He has it. If people, if people ever want to see what it takes to be in WWE, go watch the show Tough Enough, and they, I know they have them. Uh, WWE has it on the on the cock on the peacock. They have old episodes of uh, Tough Enough. In Tough Enough, they made these guys go, like there was a, a uh, an arena full, and they'd have wrestlers go into the ring, and they'd embarrass them. All right, sell me. I'm strong. I'm passionate. No, 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 no. God damn it. Give me the real. Give me shit that is going to give people a reason to stand up and fight for you and want to get in this ring and beat your opponent's ass for you. Don't give me, oh, I'm passionate. I'm, no, give me the fire. Give me something that's going to make me stand up and say I'm with you. So that's the kind of stuff that WWE is looking for. And Tough Enough is a great show. And I think they should bring it back and do more with it. Because, man, it really shows you how much it takes for you to make it in WWE.